The earlier parts of this lecture have described single object tracking models and how to recursively compute the exact posterior density. Unfortunately, it is intractable to compute the posterior exactly, and we therefore need ways to approximate the posterior density. In this section, we will cover the most commonly used strategies for approximating the posterior density in single object tracking. Once we have decided how to approximate the posterior density, we obtain a single object tracking algorithm. In this video, we provide an overview of the most common ways to approximate the posterior and describe the connection to the single object tracking algorithms that we will present. As a brief recap, roughly speaking, we found that the number of hypotheses grows exponentially with time. It is therefore intractable to compute the posterior, except for the first few time steps. The main reason is perhaps that we essentially need to perform one separate karma filter update for every hypothesis, but there is also a limit to how many hypotheses we can store in memory and so on. So, it is clear that we need to introduce approximations. And the main focus in the upcoming videos is to provide an overview of different ways to do this. We focus specifically on settings where the posterior density is a Gaussian mixture, or where it can at least be approximated as a Gaussian mixture. The basic idea is quite simple. The problem is that the number of components in the posterior grows with time and eventually becomes too large. A natural solution is to find an approximation to the posterior that contains fewer terms. That is, we usually seek another Gaussian mixture that approximates the true posterior, but that contains fewer components. By reducing the number of components in every step of the recursion, we can maintain the number of components at a reasonable level and thereby obtain a tractable algorithm. Still, there are many different ways that one can do this. Most algorithms that we see do mixture reduction using either pruning or merging, or a combination of pruning and merging. In this context, pruning means that we remove unlikely hypotheses, that is, hypotheses with small weights, and we normalize the weights of the remaining hypotheses such that they sum to one. For instance, suppose we have a Gaussian mixture with two components, where the first has the weight 0.07, and the second has the weight 0.93. If we want to approximate this density as Gaussian, we could prune the first hypothesis and set p hat of x to the density p2 of x, which is the density given hypothesis 2. As you can see, in this example, p hat is then this red point dashed curve, which approximates p of x reasonably well, even though it is much smaller than p of x in the region around x equal minus 2, where p1 of x has its peak. Another common technique for mixture reduction is merging. Doing merging means that we approximate a mixture of densities by a single density, which is often a Gaussian density. This may sound precisely like pruning, but the difference here is that the approximation now depends on all components in the original mixture. For instance, if we return to the example where p of x is a Gaussian mixture with two components, we could then use merging to reduce this mixture to a single Gaussian density. However, instead of removing one component, we would select p hat of x to be a Gaussian density with the same mean and variance as p of x. A consequence of this is that the approximation depends on both components in p of x. We have illustrated this in the figure, where you can see that p hat now has a larger variance than before, and it's also shifted slightly towards the area where p1 of x has its support. The approximation p hat of x still underestimates the true density around x equal minus 2, but not to the same extent as when we used pruning. In upcoming videos, we present three different single object tracking algorithms. First, the nearest neighbor algorithm that uses pruning. Second, the probabilistic data association or PDA filter that uses merging. And finally, the more general Gaussian sum filter, which often uses pruning, but that can also use merging. Like all algorithms that we describe, these are three examples of assumed density filters. The fact that these filters are assumed density filters means that they start and end every recursion with a density from the same family of distributions. Both nearest neighbor and PDA reduce the Gaussian mixture to a single Gaussian density whereas the Gaussian sum filter reduces it to a Gaussian mixture with a few components. Nearest neighbor and PDA therefore start every recursion with a Gaussian density, 
Whereas the Gaussian sum filter starts every recursion with a Gaussian mixture density. Apart from these filters, we also present a technique called gating. The idea behind gating is that we typically know roughly where we may receive object measurements. A detection that appears far from that region is therefore very unlikely to be an object detection. Using gating, we disregard such unlikely measurements as clutter before starting the usual update step, which means that we can reduce the computational complexity, often by a considerable amount.